This week's demonstration is brought to you in association with BusyMits.com, the online craft social network. Hello and welcome to another demonstration at the Crafts Channel. I'm Chelsea Clark and today we have Corinne Brad with us who's going to be demonstrating how to make these pretty paper windmills. So over to you, Corinne. Hi Chelsea, yeah. I mean, paper windmills are one of those things that we've all had as children. Um, they're very evocative of, you know, a nicer, more innocent age. Yeah. Um, and it's just one of those things, they're fascinating. You know, they, you get them, you can blow them and they stand in the, stay in the wind and just spin round. Um, and it, but, you know, I, I love them. They look great as a decoration just in the home, mm. wedding tables, you know, if you've got a garden party, if you can line them all up along the flower bed. Yeah. Um, the paper ones that we've got here are not going to survive a rainstorm. Okay. Um, but you know, they're, they're, they're just really pretty to make. And I think most of us know how to make your basic paper windmill, like the one that you have here, mm -hmm. where you just have a square of paper and you cut diagonally in the direction of the opposite corner, mm -hmm. down to a, center, uh, you know, a central circle in the middle. And then all you do is simply fold over each left-hand point mm -hmm. and secure it in the middle. Whoop. Butter fingers. Mm -hmm. You know, secure it in the middle to make that very basic, quite yeah. geometric windmill shape. You've got but four there, haven't you? Four. Yeah. If you have a look in the vase that you've got there, you've got an eight petaled round of softer windmill shape, and that's what I'm going to show you how to make today. This is beautiful, this one. Really beautiful. What we've done is it's, it's just a um, slightly different from this very square shape, um, and we've locked two sets into each other. So okay. we've got some templates. Now I've drawn these templates out, and these will be available. There'll be a link um, for you to go online Perfect. to download these templates. That's great. So you quite simply, and you can tell this is the original template, <laughs> just <laughs> draw around your template onto a piece of double-sided paper. Mm -hmm. um, there's one I've cut out here, and I'm just going to show you very quickly how to cut it out. When you're drawing around it, um, use a light pencil, but don't forget to mark where you actually need your um, holes to go. Mm -hmm. Because what you need to do is you need to punch holes in each of the ends of the tips and also the centre of the circle. Yeah. Joins all together then. Oh, that's really lovely. Let me just cut this. And that will make one this size, will it? No, that will make one slightly smaller. I thought I'd make the smaller one because I thought it might be quicker to cut out, but I <laughs> could have been lying. You know when you think you've just done all the preparation you possibly could do, and <laughs> then you just think, mm, I'm just going to have to talk now? No, that's perfect. Is this um, the size that it will eventually be, then, the yes. smaller one? Yes, yeah. But I mean, with the templates, if you download them and you know, print them out, if you've got a, access to a photocopier or if you've got a scanner where you can, you can enlarge and reduce, mm. you can you know, make it any size you like. W all I would say is the bigger you make it, the more unwieldy it becomes. Right, um, not as sturdy. No, well, this, and the other thing is it may droop because these are held on um, with simply a dressmaker's pin, like a pearl-headed dressmaker's pin. Oh, right. Slotted through um, and it's in a wooden skewer. Okay. Because yeah. it, it, it's one of those, you know, you, when you buy these windmills from the shops, they've got the proper plastic fittings and it, you know, they blow around perfectly. But it, it took a while to perfect it so that it would spin around without getting caught. Mm. So no, there's actually a is... couple of pearl beads there as well, which act as washers to keep it spinning well. I can see that. They seem to spin around quite easily. Okay. So we have our two shapes. I'm just going to pop my rubbish on the side here mm -hmm. and grab some glue. You only, you only need glue for one thing. Oh, okay. Um, so you've got your two shapes. If you mm. punch your centre hole, this is with a simple hammer punch. Which doesn't want to work today. <laughs> I need to give it a bit more welly. That's great. Okay. Every single one do you go yeah. round? <laughs> okay. Please excuse me a second while I just do this. <laughs> I'm, I'll tell you what it is, is because I'm very conscious of the fact that in the comfort of your own home, it doesn't matter how much noise you make. No. When you've got your uh, producer with a pair of headphones on, 
We're not allowed to cough, basically. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is lovely. I like the, um, the colours on this, I suppose, because you're going to see both colours and you're going to benefit from well, this is it, yeah, because you, that's why really you want double-sided. You can do it with single-sided paper, but you're always going to end up with a white you know, side to it. Yeah. Um, what I would recommend that you do, and this is really the only glue that you need to use, is you just need to glue your two pieces together at the centre. And there is a reason for that. I'll show you that in a minute. Make sure that you don't have your two pieces opposite ways round, otherwise it won't work. Oh, right. Okay. Make sure they're both going I sort of in a clockwise direction. And if you lay this one over here, and what you want to make sure is that the sails mm -hmm. line up with the gaps on the one underneath. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. yeah and then when it's done that, ah. you simply fold this out like this, and then you can just manipulate it while the glue's still wet. Twist it a little. You can just twist it to make sure it's in exactly the right place. Okay. All the holes match up. Well, in the middle, that is. Grab yourself an eyelet. Um, it's very difficult to put this through from the front. Mm -hmm. What you'll find, you've got eight layers of paper here now. Yeah. Including the two in the centre makes ten layers of paper, and your average eyelet is going to struggle okay. to fit ten layers of paper in. So I tend to leave the eyelet down there, pop the centre hole in, mm -hmm. and then. Rather than do it in a round, I do it opposite sides in first. Okay. You've got to hold them all down. It's so simple though really, isn't it? Well it is. I mean, the, with the, the templates, there's, you can make all manner of shapes. Yeah. Um, I mean, as, again online, I've seen some beautiful flower windmills oh, wow. that a lady called Heather Bailey has done. Okay. Um, they're absolutely fantastic. You know, she's done them with her own design of paper and they've got um, sort of like, I would say, wrinkly edges, not, you know what I mean, they've got like crenellated edges to them mm. and they look absolutely fantastic. In a vase, on a windowsill, on a bright sunny day, you know, they this. really brighten up a room. I really love this, it's got a real vintage kind of feel to it, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, any of the papers that you've got, you know, you, maps are very trendy. I mean, I've done some pinwheel maps and because they're double-sided, I mean, yeah. I've cut them out of an old atlas, which my mother, bless her, would have... Um, Killed before oh, when I was younger. Because so books are not meant to be defaced. <laughs> but when you've, them a new life. when you've bought them from a car boot sale and they were going to get chucked out anyway, <laughs> you've got an excuse. Um, what I should have done while I had two hands is just put my eyelet setter tip in my tool. Okay. I need three hands. <laughs> right, again. Give that a really good hammer down to mm -hmm. hold all the pieces in place. So that's your flower pinwheel. There we go, yeah, that looks great. Very simply, to attach it to a skewer, you need to take a glass-headed pin okay. and a small pearl bead. Yeah. Pop that through the centre of the eyelet. Okay. If you wanted to, I mean, the thing is, you could put a, a disc of paper in the middle. Right. I've stopped doing it because the eyelet is, there's not enough room to fit it, yeah. all, stack it all onto the eyelet. And if you've got a nice pearly bead in there, it doesn't really matter. I can see you've done it with this one, but it really doesn't yes. matter. Does yeah, it? but they only had four petals. Good. They only had four sides to them. Yeah, that's true. Um, I've put a slightly bigger pearl on the back, and then what I've got, I've got an ordinary wooden uh, bamboo skewer. Yeah. If you make a hole in the bamboo skewer with a needle tool, it it might split the top of the skewer. Don't worry if not, because I'm going to cover this in a minute with washi tape. Mm -hmm. And then. What you need to do, if you get your pliers and you see the width of your bamboo tool, so it'll be about there, hold it tight in the pliers yeah. and bend that pin. I mean, pins will bend quite easily just with your finger. Yeah. And then you can Slot that in. slip it through the hole. And as if by magic, <laughs> you should be able to mi mi manipulate it through the hole. Like that. Oh, wow. If you're giving this to a child, what I would recommend is get a pair of cutters and cut that point off of the yeah. pin. Equally, cut the point off the bottom of your skewer because, it, you know, it's just a common sense thing. You don't want to give one of the... I mean, you wouldn't give one of these to a two-year-old child anyway because, it, you know, those chances are that they could hurt themselves with it. Um, I'm just securing that down with some washi tape. Mm -hmm. um, and also the other thing I've found as well is, is if you, you can cover the whole stem with washi tape, yeah. it's actually much quicker than painting it. And the simplest way to do that, I won't cover the whole stem because we haven't really got the time. If you just put your tape on at a really steep angle, 
and then wrap it around. You're not overlapping so much either, are no. you? No. You know, and you can cover the whole skewer with that so it's, it's got a nice finish to it. Yeah. And then just manipulate that so that it's not drooping. drooping. Great. There you go. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much <laughs> for okay. that, Corinne. And don't forget to subscribe to the Crafts channel for notifications on the latest tutorials and demonstrations. Thanks so much.